So the other day I came across some beautiful SVG icons. In this case, uh, here we can see Icon Finder. I'm looking up some Chevron icons, and Chevron icons happen to be something that I've always wanted to use uh, more extensively. And when I came across these SVG icons, it made me remember how little I understand about SVG and about using SVG inside of an Angular application. So I wanted to take a look at trying to build an SVG icon system in Angular. I didn't know anything about this, so I ended up just Googling, and I came across a blog post by Varun Vakar. Uh, sorry if the pronunciation's off there. And he had a good explanation of how to do this, this type of thing in React. So I basically took his example in React and translated it to Angular. So let me just show you what this might look like. So here is my demo app. I'll just refresh. And here's my little left chevron and my right chevron, both of them inside circles. You can see I have some smaller chevrons. And I'm just including these inside of a, of a button. And uh, you can see that uh, essentially we get just a nice dynamically sized, dynamically generated uh, SVG icon. So let's jump in the code and see what's going on here. So here is my uh, app component. And here is the counter that we just saw. And here's the um, app icon component. So the app icon component is going to be the abstraction of our SVG icon. And it takes a type input binding, which you can see here we have chevron circle left and chevron circle right. Now these types are going to correspond to these file names that I download. So essentially I downloaded the SVG for these particular uh, icons here in Icon Finder. I renamed them to strip out the IDs that Icon Finder appends. And so this is the essentially uh, base file name less the extension. Now I'm also providing a title here. And this was kind of my attempt to build uh, on top of uh, Varun's React example by adding some ARIA attributes. Now, full caveat, uh, I have no experience with ARIA and generally accessibility, so uh, don't take any of this as the right way. This is just kind of my interpretation of what I've been reading. So the title here actually translates into ARIA attributes under the hood for this app icon abstraction. Now, you don't have to provide a title. So for example, in those little smaller icons that I had, here I just have the type, but I don't have a title. And what we'll see is that by omitting the title, this app icon actually gets hidden using ARIA hidden attributes from assistive technologies like screen readers. So let's dive in and take a look at how the app icon works. So if we jump over into my app icon component, we have a number of things going on. First, at the top of this component, you'll see that I have a number of imports of SVG files. Now, in a native JavaScript context, this doesn't make any sense. You can't really import an SVG file into a JavaScript module. However, I'm using a Webpack loader called SVG Sprite Loader, which is going to intercept these imports for SVGs, and it's going to extract them into an SVG Sprite. So for example, we have a bunch of chevrons here, the circle left, the circle right, and then the chevrons in various directions. And what we can see if we jump over into our HTML again is that at the very top of our body, we have this injected SVG. Let me see if I could just make this a little bit more readable. Um, shrink it. At the top here, we have our SVG, and inside the SVG are a number of symbols, and each one of these symbols corresponds to one of those imported files. So here's the chevron circle left, chevron circle right, chevron down left, right up. Um, and inside is automatically the uh, contents of those SVG files. Now you'll see here that I have an app icon dash in front of those file names, which we don't have here in our import statements. And that's part of that SVG sprite loader configuration in Webpack, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, but just trust that these imports are all being intercepted by Webpack and parlayed into this SVG sprite. Now, the SVG sprite, you can see each of these symbols has a unique ID, and that ID is then going to be referenced inside of my app icon component. So if we jump back over here into the app icon component, what you can see is that the template of the app icon component is a simple SVG, and inside of this SVG is a single use element, where this href points to the type input binding provided with an app icon prefix. 
So again, if we jump back to our app component and we see that I'm providing type chevron circle left, internally to the app icon, that becomes app icon dash chevron circle left, which then corresponds to the app icon chevron circle left in our SVG sprite. And if we zoom in to this uh, app icon component, let me bump this back up again, you can see we have our app icon component, then inside we have our SVG for the template of that component, and then I have the use element that points to that ID referenced in that SVG sprite. And that just pulls in that uh, SVG implementation into that local uh, rendering there, into that shadow DOM. And that's how we get the app icon to render this SVG sprite. Now, uh, again, there's a bunch of stuff here concerned with ARIA and you know, again, full disclosure, I have no real experience with ARIA, so I'm not really going to talk too much about that, other than it was my attempt to try and add some accessibility logic into the app, uh, the app icon. So what we can see simply is that if the title is provided as an input binding, I'm removing the concept of ARIA hidden, I'm adding the concept of ARIA labeled by, and I'm binding the ARIA title. Now if there is no title, then I'm going to set aria hidden to true, and I'm going to remove the aria labeled by and the aria title. And then we can see these are being implemented both as host attribute bindings, with the aria hidden being bound to aria hidden and aria labeled by, aria labeled by. Uh, but then also, if there is an aria title, I create this title element inside of the SVG, which I believe is supposed to provide the sort of alternative text to the app icon, which is being rendered with a roll of image. Now again, I'm not going to go into any more of that because again, I just don't have much confidence there at all. Um, most of this is my interpretation of what I read in this accessibility SVG icons uh, blog post. Um, the other thing worth looking at is the, uh, the styling for this component. So by default, um, we have a height and width of 1EM, and that just allows the icon to natively scale with the font size of its context. Uh, but probably the most important things to see here are on the SVG element itself, that embedded SVG element, we have color inherit and fill current color. The color inherit, the color inherit ensures that the SVG uses the color from the parent context, right, that it's inheriting from its parent context, and then this fill current color essentially makes sure that the fill colors of the SVG vectors match the color of the color CSS property, the value of the CSS color property, which is inheriting. So in other words, and I'm not articulating this well, these two properties work together to make sure that the, that the text color and the SVG fill colors match, which is what allows me to change the color of the icon here on hover which we'll see, let me just jump back into my, um, so if I have my app icon here and we just look at the less behind this file, this is the hover there and I'm changing the color of the context for the hover to this uh, fuchsia. And this color is being inherited by the app icon which is then being consumed by that fill color to color the SVG vectors. Um, so let's take a quick look now at the Webpack configuration just so you can see how I'm using the, uh, the SVG sprite loader. So this is the Webpack config. Here I'm testing for SVG files. I'm using the SVG sprite loader, uh, but I'm only including this folder for these options. So what that means is when I include uh, the SVG files in this particular folder, they're going to adhere to this set of options. And what this allows me to do is actually create a single SVG sprite that has multiple sets of icons associated with it. So if you imagine that this is a single set of icons that adhere to this particular uh, ID naming constraint, I could now have multiple of these, right, like this, that each have different folders and each have different symbol ID configurations and other types of configurations. So um, all in all, you know, mostly this is a, 
a note to self here. I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around using SVG icons inside of Angular applications. And uh, going into this, I had no idea what I was doing. And now I actually feel a little bit confident and actually quite, quite uh, excited to use SVG icons in my Angular app. And just um, a huge shout out to Varun Vakar again for his uh, blog post on React SVG icons, uh, which again is the basis of my exploration here in uh, Angular 7.2.0.